Okay, I want you to take some quick notes here on creating a uniform electric field. You've seen this term in some of your practice problems, uniform electric field. The question is, how do we get this field? And we get this field by creating something we call a parallel plate capacitor. A parallel plate capacitor. So I want you to imagine for a moment that I take and on the ceiling of this classroom I spread positive charge. So I remove the electrons um, so that I have a net positive charge on the ceiling. And then on the floor I take those ex uh, electrons that I remove from the ceiling and I smear them all over the floor. So now the ceiling is charged positively and the floor is charged negatively and I have a situation that looks like this. And we're going to take that same amount of charge, same charge imbalance on the ceiling and the floor. Well, a really cool thing happens here. Because the field created from this positive test charge, I'm sorry, from this positive charge, source charge, will point radially outward, and this one points radially outward. Where they interact in between, they act to repel each other and push each other straight down. And so the more charge I have sort of lined up here, the straighter this field will be. And so if I can charge the ceiling and charge the floor in this way, I create what's called a parallel plate capacitor. These two um, systems of charge are parallel to one another. And I will get a nice uniform electric field in between these two plates. And since the spacing of the field lines determines the strength of the electric field, remember that here it doesn't matter whether I'm here or here or here or here or anywhere in between these two plates, I actually am going to have the same electric field. The value of E will be the same. And so that makes this a really great setup for doing some problems. Now I want you to be careful here, it doesn't matter how I turn these plates, I can flip this upside down and make the bottom positive and the top, the floor positive and the ceiling negative, and I'm just going to flip the direction of my electric field, it's going to go up. I want to show you this other diagram because I want to show you at these edges here, right, it isn't straight. There's nothing on this side to prevent that field which is pointing radially outward. It, there's nothing to bend it, to, to deflect it. So it's going to curve. So on the outsides of the parallel plate, we have the field is not uniform. But with, and we aren't going to do problems that deal with these fringe areas. We're going to do all our problems within this nice uniform field. But you should be aware that on the edges, it is not a uniform field. And again, it doesn't matter which way I flip these, you need to be able to get used to seeing them. In fact, if we look at this first example, the problem may say, if I have a uniform field pointing south or pointing down, this is what it might look like. If I have a uniform field pointing north or up, this second diagram is what it might look like. If I had a uniform field pointing east, then this is the setup I'm looking at. Okay, if I wanted it west, I would just flip this diagram 180 degrees. And so it's always a good idea to draw these when you're working your problems. All right, so let's take a look at our parallel plate capacitors and get a formula that we can use to plug in our numbers. Now I want you to think of it like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or let's just say a peanut butter sandwich. If I have a lot of peanut butter, and a little bit of bread, then it's going to stick to something a lot more than if I have a lot of bread and a little bit of peanut butter. So our capacitors are the same way. The more charge we have over a given surface area, the stronger the field will be. The less charge we have over a given surface area, the, the weaker the field will be. And so here's our formula. Our electric field is determined by the amount of charge that we have divided by the surface area and then this little epsilon naught that's called the permittivity of free space. It's a constant. You'll find it in the front of your textbook. On a test, we'll give it to you. I don't expect you to memorize that. We'll give it to you. But when you're working your homework problems, you're going to find it in your um, textbook. So 
this Q over A has a special value or a special name to it. It's called the charge density. How much charge I have per unit area is called charge density. So we can rewrite this formula as sigma, that's the sign for um, symbol we use for charge density over epsilon naught. So sometimes they're going to tell you how much charge and they're going to tell you the shape of the um, capacitor. It could be circular, it could be rectangular, it could be square. And other times they're going to tell you the charge density. They're going to do that Q over A for you. Um, and you just have to divide it by epsilon naught. Okay, one last thing to remember about electric fields and forces is my field, again, is the direction that a positive test charge will accelerate. So if I have a positive test charge in this field, it would accelerate downward, right? So the net force on that would be down, right? And you still need to be able to use, um, you know, your force um, equals F over Q to solve these problems. And if I switch it and I put a negative test charge in the center there, then my force is actually up. It's in the opposite direction um, by convention. And so we know that the force on this charge would be up. So it's good, again, to draw this because sometimes they'll just give you, you know, the field and they'll say a negative charge. And the common mistake is for people to assume the force is down. You have to remember these conventions as you're working through the problems. Okay, I'm going to pause here, and then I'm going to give you two um, sample exercises to work on before you work on your problem set.